Today, Malta and Sicily are famously known for their rich history, tourism and beach resorts. However, just over 800,000 years ago, these places were known as the land of giant animals, where large swans outgrew the dwarf elephants in an isolated ecosystem. Of course, none of those fascinating creatures can be found in the modern world. However, that's not a reason to forget about them. In today's video, we will look at some incredible creatures that once inhabited prehistoric Malta and Sicily. We usually associate elephants with being big and heavy, as currently they are the largest living land mammals on Earth. However, there was a period of time when some elephant species were only slightly larger than a domestic pig. It happened because of the phenomenon known as the insular dwarfism, when large animals start to become smaller to adapt to the restricted resources of the surrounding area, and the Paleoloxidon falconary is the prime example of such an evolution. It is believed to be the standard from the straight-tusked elephant that once inhabited the west expanses of prehistoric Europe and was, at the time, considered to be one of the largest elephant species. A fully grown Paleoloxidon Antiquus was 4 meters or 13 feet tall and weighed 10 tons or 22,000 pounds. During the late Middle Pleistocene, around 700,000 years ago, these gigantic elephants reached what is now called Sicily. They likely did it from the Calabrian Peninsula, located in southern Italy. It is confirmed that Paleoloxidon falconary colonized Malta during the glacial periods, when sea levels were low and the distance between the islands was no more than a thin strait. The Sicilian dwarf elephant was really small, with adult males reaching the height of only 1 meter or 3.3 feet tall and achieving an unbelievable body weight of just 300 kilograms or 660 pounds, making it 10 times lighter than the Borneo pygmy elephant, the smallest living elephant today. Their body structure and hilariously low weight made them look like a cup of the modern African bush elephant. At the time of their existence, Sicily had no predators that could threaten the life of tiny elephants, meaning it was primarily the land of herbivores. However, the island's fauna was depauperate, which limited the numbers of local species. It's unlikely that they could confront other species for food, as elephants could reach high-level vegetation using their trunk while other animals were most likely ground feeders. However, around 200,000 years ago, Sicily was once again connected with the Italian mainland, allowing the large carnivores to colonize the island. Of course, a tiny elephant without any important mechanisms to avoid large predators couldn't survive the changing circumstances. Fortunately, this reunification with mainland Europe allowed the recolonization of Sicily by the straight-tusked elephant, giving rise to a new species of Paleoloxidon. It was also affected by the insular dwarfism, but not as much as the previous colonizer. This elephant species was four times bigger, weighing around 1,200 kilograms or 2,600 pounds with an average height of 1.8 meters or 6 feet tall, which is similar to the modern male human. Their larger body size compared to Paleoloxidon falconary is explained as a need to defend themselves against introduced predators such as cave lions, brown bears, wolves and cave hyenas. Besides that, it was an important element in competing with other herbivores for food. They were thriving for a long time, until around 20,000 years ago, when they became extinct during the glacial maximum, meaning they almost made it to the Holocene epoch.
thanks to this tiny rodent, we know for sure that Sicily was once connected to Africa, making it the only Mediterranean island ever united with the Dark Continent. The ancestors of the Sicilian Gandhi came from North Africa, from the high altitude ranges of the Atlas Mountains. Today, they can be found in Algeria, Libya, Tunisia and Morocco. The Sicilian Gandhi was much larger than the African counterparts, measuring about 40 cm or 16 inches, which is twice long as the African Gandhi. It was a cute, fluffy rodent with a sandy brown coat, short legs and tail. Its appearance resembled that of a chinchilla or guinea pig. Like many desert animals, it didn't drink but got all the moisture from its food, consuming every type of available plant. It became extinct during the late Pleistocene, probably for the same reason as the previous species. If Paleoloxidon falconeri is a remarkable example of insular dwarfism, then Cygnus falconeri is a prime example of insular gigantism. It was a gigantic swan species, measuring about 2 meters or 6.5 feet in length, from bill to tail, making it about 30% larger than the iconic mute swan. The Sicilian giant swan had a wingspan of insane 3 meters or 10 feet, which is only a bit smaller than the wingspan of the Californian condor. What's even more interesting is that Sicily was the only place where birds outgrew elephants. However, many illustrations of this swan, together with Paleoloxidon falconeri, are incorrect, as there are no confirmed sources that Cygnus falconeri ever thought of the dwarf elephants. It suggested that only occasional clashes could happen while searching for food, but nothing more than that. There is not much available information about the extinction of the giant swan, but it's estimated that Cygnus falconeri became extinct after the last glacial period, probably due to the significant climatic change and the introduction of new predators to Sicily. It was hard to find at least a few images of this animal, so pictures of closely related species will be shown instead. The Maltese dwarf hippo was a very small animal, reaching a height of only 1 meter or 3.3 feet tall, giving it the same height as the Sicilian dwarf elephant. This truly unique species of hippo was highly adapted to searching for food at rocky outcrops and abrupt terrain, giving it the second name of a mountain hippopotamus. It is estimated that the ancestors of dwarf hippo reached Malta during the Messinian salinity crisis, during which Malta was connected with both Europe and Africa. Their diet was suggested to be more generalist than that of the common hippo, due to the limited resources of a tiny Mediterranean island. As I didn't find any information about its extinction, I can suggest that it became extinct somewhere around the end of the Pleistocene, due to habitat loss and significant climate change. Another great example of island gigantism was the Sicilian giant Dormouse. It's believed to be the largest species of Dormouse ever to exist, being twice the size of any other known species, growing to about 70 cm or 2.4 feet long, which is similar to a domestic cat. They were endemic to Malta and Sicily, where these creatures thrived for over 400,000 years until they became extinct around 500,000 years ago. Its closest living relative is the garden dormice, a tiny rodent with a body length of no more than 15 cm or 0.5 feet long, which is five times smaller than the Lathia. Compared to other species of dormouse, its diet was more herbivorous, consuming a lot of tough, fibrous vegetation. 
The exact date of its extinction is unknown, but several factors contributed to its demise, including the reunification of Sicily with the mainland Europe, which caused a new migration of the continental animals to the previously isolated island. The climatic change also played a significant role, further reducing the population numbers. One of the most recent extinctions occurred in Sicily around 100 years ago was the disappearance of the Sicilian wolf, a subspecies of the mainland Italian wolf. They likely got to the Sicily through a land bridge around 20,000 years ago, when the island was united with the continental Italy. The Sicilian wolf was smaller than the Apennine wolf and had a lighter fur coloration, with poorly defined dark bands on the forelimbs. If we take a look at a single photo of an extinct specimen, we can see that its appearance resembles more a large dog rather than a wolf. They were extensively hunted during the 19th century and by 1920 were rarely seen in the wild. The last confirmed Sicilian wolf was killed in 1924. However, occasional and unconfirmed sightings were made in the 1930s and 1940s. Unfortunately, none of them were confirmed, so a truly unique subspecies of wolf has gone forever. Sicily and Malta were inhabited by an incredible amount of animals, but unfortunately, not all of them have enough information to have at least a paragraph in my text. Most of them didn't have the needed amount of illustrations, so I did my best to cover as many species as possible. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Here are some other videos you can watch as well.